Mill four. Oh, I think we got there. I think we got there. We did it, everybody. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. What are they planning? They got three cards in hand still and only three lands. Well, the good news though is <laughs> Silver Smoke Gold doesn't get affected by that. Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, we're going back into the historic format because we've gotten quite a few new cards added to the format, but we never took the time to look at these cards until now. These cards are newish to Arena, but are staples of today's archetype, and yet the deck is still within our budget range. So join me today as we attempt to dig value out of our graveyard and take to the skies in a deck that I am calling Dredge Air. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we rock. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So our dredge air deck is Demir of blue and black. We're looking at an average mana curve of about 2.2. We have 26 creatures in the deck, four instants, eight sorceries, four enchantments, and only 18 lands. Real quick disclaimer before we continue, technically we're saying this deck is dredge in name only. The idea behind the deck is still utilizing a lot of cards that dredge in other formats actually enjoys. What I mean by that, of course, is we're just basically going to try to take advantage of our graveyard to cast a bunch of stuff for free. So how exactly are we going to pull that off with only a mana base of, as you can see right here, it's only 18 lands? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. Well, I'm glad you asked. So that's what we're gonna now talk about right now. So let's go over, of course, our game plan and how we're gonna do that. In the one drop slot, you have Fester Leech and Stitcher Supplier. These will get, of course, the mill process going. With Fester Leech here, when it deals combat damage, you get to mill two cards. If you can keep doing some damage with this card, this card will rack up a ton of mill for very little investment. Stitcher Supplier is pretty much gonna be just a staple for this type of archetype, where all you have to do is enter the battlefield and it mills three cards. If it does die, then it mills three more cards. So ideally, have this chump block and you can get a ton of value as well. In the two drop slot, this is where things get a little bit more fun for us. So we have Narcomoeba here. Ideally, you again, don't want to cast this. You just want it to get milled into the library. And if it does, you can automatically put it on the battlefield for free. You also have a new card that was added in, Blood Gas here. So let's talk about this brand new card here. Blood Gas is a double black 2-1 vampire of the spirit that says it cannot block. And it also has haste as long as an opponent has 10 or less life. It basically will trigger with the landfall ability, which means whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, you may return Blood Gas from your graveyard to the battlefield. Again, we ideally want this to come in for free. In the three drop slot, we have two additional zombies that'll also be able to trigger themselves from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped if certain conditions are met. For the first one that's going to be Silver Smoke Ghoul here, who will only be able to do this if you gain three or more life in a turn. And the other card is going to be Prized Amalgam. It's a little wordy, so I'll kind of simplify this for you. Basically, we can utilize this card from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped if only another creature actually did the same thing prior to it. Finally, another creature we technically have, but we actually never want to cast it, and it's going to be Wonder. So this incarnation is a flying 2-2 that reads, as long as Wonder is in your graveyard and you control an island, creatures you control have flying. Basically, this is where the air part of our deck actually comes into play. So as long as this card, of course, is in there, all of our creatures will be able to fly over our opponent's stuff, and we can basically just swing with evasive creatures to hopefully get our victory. Now, as far as the rest of our deck, we're just going to try to utilize a bunch of cards that can surveil, i.e. help mill a bunch of cards into the graveyard to then trigger everything, ideally for free. Back going to the one drop slot again, we have Otherworldly Gaze here, which also has a flashback ability, and it surveils for three. Compelling Argument here allows us to just basically mill five cards, or if we have to, we have to, we can cycle it away. Ideally, we never want to cycle it, we just want to cast it again for its two mana cost. We have Founding of the Third Path here, which is going to be great for us. The enchantment here will basically allow us to utilize some of our sorceries and instants again for a couple extra turns just to get more value out of our milling plan. And then finally, the only other sorcery we have is going to be Creeping Chill. Remember how I just mentioned that again, Silver Smoke Ghoul won't be able to come in unless we gain three or more life? Correct! Well, basically, that's where Creeping Chill is. This card, for those of you who have never actually seen it, is a four mana sorcery that reads, the Creeping Chill will deal three damage to each opponent and you gain three life. When Creeping Chill is put into your graveyard from your library you can exile it and if you do you can basically can cast it for free so basically we never want to have to cast it for its four it's going to be just a free spell as long as we can mill it finally to round out the package we will have again as i mentioned earlier only 18 lands which do look very low but ideally we don't want to have to mill away lands we just want
want to try to get the most of them out so we can get the most value out of our game plan here. So that'll be in five islands, five swamps, some choked estuaries. In paper, these are rares, but in arena, they are uncommon. So we're definitely going to take advantage of that and some obscure storefronts to help filter out what we don't need. As far as the sideboard is concerned, the game plan will basically go, you want to have bone shards here. This can help you sacrifice some of your creatures, but ideally you'll be able to bring them back anyway. So this isn't going to be anything that really hurts us all that much. Or you can say discard a card that we ideally want in the graveyard, such as an extra copy of Wonder. You have Corpse Cobble here, which is a little bit spicy here, but if we do manage to sacrifice a ton of our creatures, we can get one giant zombie to help swing in and do some massive damage against our opponent. Ashiarch Dream Render here is going to be great for us. This will also punish decks that are trying to search their libraries for certain spell cards or prevent them basically from, say, utilizing the fetch lands if you want to take this into the timeless format. For control decks out there, we have duresses. And then finally, in the last slot, we'll have Make Disappear. This is actually a really awesome counter spell for us because, again, there's going to be moments where you don't mind sacrificing maybe some of your creatures to then bring them back anyway for free. So then you'll get the max amount of value out of this counter spell. But otherwise, the final question we just need to ask is, can this super cheap game plan work on the budget that we have with a low mana count in the historic formats? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Well, there's only one way to find out. So let's go ahead, let's take our deck into a couple of matches and see how well it does. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can we take advantage of our graveyard to maximize it for value? So with that, we have some Fester Leeches. We have a Blood Gas. It's mostly a creature heavy hand, which is not what we wanted, but that's okay. We'll find a way to make it work. So we'll just keep what we got. All right, opponent's playing planes. Favorite Hoplite. All right, so with that, Choked Estuary, revealing the island. We will play Fester Leech. Hopefully we can start getting the mill process going real quick here. Right. Pathway. Luminator Virtuoso. They go swinging. Down to 19. Founding of the third path, which is good. We'll swing here. Let's see what they will do. Oh, they do block. Bring it on. Well, that allows us to turn on the leech. So we get rid of their little creature there. That actually worked out a little bit better than I thought. I don't know if our opponent was anticipating that, but that's cool. Uh, opponent. Reckless Rage. Okay. Blowing, but this is fine. Down to 17. Obscure a storefront, so. I think now's our chance to do founding the third path. Second part of the saga. No four. Alright, deck, come on. Give me a good hit. Okay, well, that wasn't too shabby. Alright, we get a Narc Amoeba out of the deal. And then we drain them. Down to 17. Obscure storefront coming in. Immediately sacks. I think we'll want to get a swamp. Swamp out of the deal. Up to 21. Okay. We bought ourselves at least another turn there at the very least. Illuminator Virtuoso again. Go swinging. No blocks. Down to 19. Choke Estuary. Okay, so with that, we will then copy Otherworldly Gaze. Alright, deck, come on. Give me a good hit. Okay, so with that, throw Wonder away. We will throw Fester Leech away. Alright, so with that, Choke Estuary. We will play Bloodgast. And we swing with our Narc Amoeba. They're down to 16. Okay, so unfortunately Bloodcast can't block for a bit, but that's okay. All we have to do, though, is just sponge a couple hits, however, from our opponent's creatures. And then hopefully we can get to victory. Double strike. Huh? Double strike. Huh? Double strike. Huh? Getting pumped. Virtuoso is a little scary here, but it's fine. We'll be okay, everybody. Shockland. Temperature stick. Legionnaire. Ouch. This is really good. Down to five. Okay. Got our compelling argument. So with that, how do we do this? Prized Amalgam. And Fester Leech. Swing with Blood Gas as he can't block anyway. Down to 11. Okay, deck. So all we have to do at this point is just block things and hope for the best. Wanna go swinging here? 
So with that, we will what do we block here. How do we do this? Okay. Narcomiva. And Tentress Legionnaire. Favorite hoplite. Okay. Narcomiva dies. Prize of Malcolm is still alive. Okay, so how do we get out of this? Okay. Founding the third path. First part of the saga. Compelling argument for free. Narcomiba comes back. Okay. We're still in this, everybody. We're still in this. Second blood gas coming in. We swing. They're down to nine. Extra blood gas comes in. Whew. Okay. I think we can stabilize. Just barely. Okay. Our opponent is going to try to bring back some of their creatures here, which is, again, scary, but this is fine. Tetris Legionnaire coming in. They go swinging again at us. Narcomiba blocks Virtuoso. And prized amalgam blocks the legionnaire. Down to three. Okay. Mill four. Oh, I think we got there. I think we got there. We did it, everybody. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Oh man, that was a very close call there. But we managed to pull it off there. So, as you saw right there, we actually had lethal in hand, but we had, of course, the Creeping Chill, which was milled out. So that would have synced it for us, and our opponent only had one red mana open. Whew, we barely got there, but oh man, that was awesome. That is exactly what you want the deck to do. All right, my fighter friends, here we go. Can we get there with what we have? So, so looking at our hand right now, we have a Choke Sestuary. Unfortunately, it's a Tap Lamb, but that's fine. We can make that work. Citrus Supplier, Fester Leech are good. This is actually not too bad of a hand. It just is very, very slow. And if we can at least get one land, though, we should be okay with what we got. Falcon Rapid Fighter. Huh. I don't see anybody ever play this card, but okay. I guess our opponent is a Vampire deck? I guess. Maybe. Swamp. Falcon Rapid Fighter number two. Markov Baron. Okay, so they are a Vampire deck. Interesting. Well, we'll see if that works out for our opponent there. With that Stitcher Supplier, get the mill going. Okay, well, we got a Narc Amoeba off of that hit, so that's a good way to get things going. Fester Leech. And we pass. Okay, so even though they do have some beatdown, we do have ways of blocking for a little bit, so that buys us time. Well, this stinks. Unfortunately, that is bad against us, but it's fine. We'll make it work. They go swinging against us. We're down to 12. Obscure storefront. Okay, well, that's an okay hit. So here's how we do this. Founding of the third path. On one. We will cast Compelling Argument. Mill five. Oh, okay. That was a pretty good hit. We exile. Go back up some life. Obscure storefront. Brings back Bloodcast. That triggers off. Prize Amalgam. And we will get out of it an island. Which means Silver Smoke Pool and Prize of Elgum. Okay, that was nice. But we still have to get these untapped in order for us to do some damage. So we're just going to have to hold off for a little bit longer. I'm going to go swinging. We're down to eight. All right, it's closing in, but we should still be okay for a bit longer. Ooh, that pumped up their whole team. Yikes. Game plan right now is we have to be on the defensive. Mill four cards. Okay, well, we got another hit off of the Creeping Chill, which is great for us. Back up to 11. They're down to 14. We will play Founding the Third Path again. On one. So this allows us to cast Otherworldly Gaze for free. Two in the yard. No attacks. No attacks. Silver Smoke Ghoul comes back. Okay, well, at the very least, we are building a board, so we are holding our ground while we can. But is it enough versus our opponent? What are they planning? They got three cards in hand still, and only three lands. Well, the good news, though, is <laughs> Silver Smoke Gold doesn't get affected by that, and Prize of Malcolm survives the hit. Oh, man, our opponent just gave up on the spot. Wow. Okay, not exactly how I was expecting that to go, but I'll take that. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can we get a ton of value out of our graveyard with this deck? Well, let's see what we got. So we have the Narcomiba in hand. It's a little creature heavy with Fester Leech and Blood Gas, but we do actually have an Otherworldly Haze. Might take us a while because of that obscure storefront. Still, I think we can keep what we have, and we'll see if we can make it work. Opponent's got a Fate Passage. 
Luris, so graveyard shenanigans on their end too, but in a different way. Let's see who has the better options here. Ooh, okay. We have choked estuary, which is nice. We'll shovel that off with an island. So we pay Fester Leech. And pass. Okay, opponent, what do you got? Alright. Island too. Okay. Let's see, where are they going with all this? Okay. We'll show off the island again. Bloodgast. It's easy right now to try to mill everything, but since we do have actually are getting our land drops, we might as well just start casting things anyway. Okay, so our opponent is a rogues deck. Well, the milling that they're going to do actually helps us out quite a bit. Let's see if our opponent could figure that out quick, though. Okay. We'll be able to get some free value out of this. Not yet, but we'll hopefully we will soon. All right, so with that, we'll play... We do this. We'll play the island. We'll play a bloodgast. Do you have an answer, opponent? They do not. Okay. We swing here. Do some damage. Down at 18. We pass. Here comes Thieves Guild Enforcer. Before we have that resolve, let's actually have Otherworldly Gaze too, because I want to see what we hit. Okay, so, we'll just throw away everything here. Some more milling. Oh, there we go. That was the hit for us. Okay. So that triggers off Prized Amalgam. So that won't come back just yet, but it will be coming back very soon. Graph Digger. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! No! Yeah, I, I'm not even gonna entertain this. We're not gonna do this, everybody. I, I'm just gonna just say right now, I could play and could theoretically beat our opponent here, but it's not worth the effort. And there you have it, ready. So that was our Dredge Air deck for you in the historic format. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? Granted, we technically kind of at least got one game off, and the other ones were... Well, how do I say this? They were a little goofy. There was actually, as you saw from some of the footage, some really unexpected twists on some of the matches we had, which kind of frustrated me a little bit. But, it, I mean, that's just how it goes for Magic. There's going to be sometimes where even you can, as much as you try to predict what our opponent's going to do, they sometimes might pull out some random jank that just somehow hoses your whole game plan. But either way, I still enjoyed what the deck was trying to do. There is, of course, going to be some thought process that I might have to do when it comes to retooling a little bit of this deck to make sure it's mostly optimized in case if I was interested in maybe upgrading it for the future. But speaking of that, if you are interested, of course, in upgrading this, there's definitely some really sweet options for you. So for those of you who are still my true fiery friends, thanks again for hanging in there. You'll also get to see right now, since you've hung in this long, how you can upgrade this deck to make it even more awesome than it currently is. Is. The upgrades you're going to get for this deck mostly will be dependent on which format you want to play the deck in, which can give you a couple of subtle little options here. So as far as upgrading your compelling arguments, we're going to get rid of those, and then we're going to add in instead Glimpse the Unthinkable. Basically, this just, of course, will mill for double the rate that originally our compelling argument had. With that, pretty much the rest of the deck kind of just stays the same. You actually don't really need to change anything. I think it's honestly optimal as is. The lands, of course, will also be dependent on what format you want to play in. If you are playing in the Timeless format, you have access to fetch land so you can use polluted delta and then get a super powerful a set of cards so watery graves under city sewers with the surveillability these are going to be really great for you if you do want to take this into timeless if you end up playing this say in historic you can still get away with fatal passage you might have to still tweak just to get some more basic lands to take full advantage of it but this again really depends on what format you prefer as far as your sideboard same thing again you can keep your bone shards this is great for both formats ashiok is also great too and it also hoses a lot more in timeless Thoughtseize also is really awesome as an upgrade as well. As far as the counter spells, if you are playing again in the historic format, you can keep your make disappears. Again, that's personal preference for you. Or if you go into timeless, you can also upgrade to then utilize the one and only counter spell. So again, just pick whatever is your best option for you. Otherwise, the only other major finisher for the deck, although the deck does run a less lands, you can still pop in a single copy of the Scarab God here. Since the majority of our creatures are actually zombies, this actually can be very helpful to help close out the game because it's such a pain to get rid of. Even 
even if your opponent has removal. And with that, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck overall. This is definitely not my style of deck, but it is hilarious when it does go off. And more often than not, I've had quite a few matches where your opponent tends to be a little on the salty side, and they kind of will scoop up once they see your deck kind of just do its thing. Especially if your opponents do not have any graveyard shenanigans to respond in best of one. So overall, to put it another way, if you are a fan of casting creatures for free, if you're a fan of the dredge mechanic, if you're a fan of milling for value, definitely give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to build up your board and amass an entire set of creatures out of nowhere at the end of your turn, and if your opponent can't respond to that, you'll be surprised, of course, at what the deck is capable of. You'll most likely have salty opponents that are probably going to scoop on the spot. But if nothing else, you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later.